Hi, I'm Abu Rengui and welcome to Mining 901. Today, I want to talk about how mining is changing as we start to move toward 2026. And when I say changing, I don't just mean new machines or fancy tech. I mean a whole set of shifts that are reshaping how mining works, how mining companies plan and how they think about the future. It's not one thing driving this, it's many things happening at once. So let's just have an honest conversation about what's going on. One of the biggest shifts is how technology is really becoming part of everything in mining. You know, in the past, mining was seen as a very physical game, even old fashioned, big trucks blasting lots of people on site. But now that picture is changing fast. We're seeing mines use smart systems that can monitor equipment in real time, predict when things might go wrong, and even fix issues before they become big problems. Machines are truly starting to operate on their own. Driverless trucks, automated drills, and people are working increasingly in remote centers from where they're managing entire sites from far, far away. It's not just about speed or profit, it's about safety, keeping people out of dangerous environments. But of course, with all this new technology, you can't just flip a switch. Companies have to train their people to use all of this tech. They have to make sure that the systems talk to each other and they have to think about things like cybersecurity, because being digital also means being exposed to new risks. So. Technology truly is transforming mining, but it's not happening in isolation. It's also being pushed along by demand, especially for what we call critical minerals. These are minerals we need for batteries, electric vehicles, clean energy technologies. The world can't get enough of them. But the problem is supply chains for these minerals are often concentrated in a few places. That means if there's any disruption like political tensions or trade barriers, it can have huge knock-on effects. Governments know this, of course, so they're bringing in new rules, new laws to keep more processing and more jobs at home. They want more control, of course, over these resources. For mining companies, that means they can't just think about digging stuff up and shipping it off to Europe and Asia. They need plans to find new sources to process more locally and to handle all these new rules and politics. And while they're thinking about that, they're also looking at automation. Automation is really an interesting topic because it's not just about replacing people. It's about changing the nature of work itself. We're talking about driverless trucks, automated processing plants and remote control centers, managing entire sites from hundreds of kilometers away. It's safer, it can be more efficient, but it also means the work is different. Instead of physical labor on site, you need people who can manage systems, analyze data, and solve problems remotely. And there's something even more transformative happening in mining. And I'm talking, of course, about generative AI. This is not just another tool. It's changing how decisions get made and who gets to make those decisions. AI can now help design mine plans, optimize processing routes, and even create entire schedules without human input. Just think about that. It's incredibly powerful, but it also means that some traditional role will disappear altogether, while other roles, I believe, will change so much that they'll need new skills entirely. Mining companies, of course, cannot ignore this. They'll try, but you definitely should not be ignoring this as an industry. They'll need to be honest about the impact. Some jobs will go away. Others will demand more technical and analytical skills than ever before. So investing in training and supporting workers through that shift is not optional. If mining companies want to succeed in this new era, they definitely need to think about that deeply and invest. Which leads us to another big shift in how mining companies are approaching innovation. It used to be that change in mining was slow and cautious, but now companies realize that they need to be open to new ideas. So they are working with universities, startup companies, tech firms, to come up with better ways to do things. We're seeing things like using bacteria to extract metals in cleaner ways or robots going where people can't go. Even digital twins, which are virtual copies of entire operations, to test these ideas before trying them in real life. 
It's about being smarter. It's about being safer and being more efficient. And frankly, it's also about staying competitive in a world that is moving fast. Part of this shift is also about rethinking mining's role entirely. Instead of always digging new holes, companies are starting to see value in recycling, recovering metals from old products, making use of what was once considered waste. It's not just good for the environment, it's good business. It reduces costs, it makes better use of resources and helps meet growing demand without always needing new mine. But even with all this technology, the demand and innovation, none of it matters if companies cannot fund their projects. The way mining gets financed is changing as well. There's massive demand for these minerals, which means big opportunities. But investors are being more careful. They want solid plans, they want good management and clear strategies for dealing with risk. At the same time, new ways of raising money are growing. Partnerships with government, special deals like royalty agreements, even green bonds. So mining companies need to be creative and flexible in how they approach funding. And running through all of this is the reality that mining does not happen in one place under one set of rules. Countries have their own laws about how mining should work. Some want more local processing. Others have different safety or environmental rules. Trade tensions can lead to new tariffs or export restrictions overnight. Companies cannot assume what worked in one country will work in another. They have to understand local laws, build good relationships with governments and communities, and be ready to adapt when things change. So when we talk about mining changing, it's not just about machines. It's about a whole industry learning to think differently. Technology, critical minerals, automation, generative AI, innovation, recycling, funding, global politics. All these things are connected. Companies that can see this bigger picture and adapt quickly are the ones that will succeed. And of course, at Mining 901, we'll keep talking about these changes so that you can stay informed and ready. If you found this helpful in any way, please like, subscribe, and share uh, with those that you think will benefit from this. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.